My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but boy, put this one in context. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Before you write off the new Facebook, I'm begging you to watch that darn video yourself. Watch the video, the video of the metaverse, and then tell me you still despise Mark Zuckerberg and the 3D horse he rode in on. On a terrific day for the averages, Dow gaining 240 points, S&P climbing 0.98%, and NASDAQ soaring 1.39%. Everybody was focused on Facebook and its rebrand into a company called Meta with a new ticker. New ticker, M-V-R-S. Get it? Within seconds of Zuckerberg revealing the new name, I read endless calls about how Facebook can run, but it cannot hide. Yeah, the misdeeds are too great. The critics act like Zuckerberg's on a mission to destroy Western democracy. Well, let's step back for a second. Facebook has become almost a term of derision, right? A third rail, a minefield with the equivalent of a skull and crossbones warning. Uh, uh, don't go near this death zone. Of course, that's only when people aren't using it to share their, most, their innermost thoughts or posting pictures on Instagram. It's been a rough ride for the company that's so reviled. It's become one of the few things that the left and the right can somehow agree on. You think everybody in Congress hates Facebook, of course, except when they're running ads for the re-election campaigns. So we'll stipulate that Facebook's got an image problem, a safety problem, possibly a political problem. But at the end of the day, this isn't mad social media or mad corporate citizenship. It's mad money. And what I saw today, when I watched Meta's Metaverse video, reminds me of why I created the FANG acronym to begin with. Because the companies that are represented by that acronym are constantly reinventing themselves. Facebook's changing its name is no different from when Google transformed itself to Alphabet, which totally threw up my acronym, by the way. At the time, that change was chided, and we still call it Google most of the time. But I think it made sense. Alphabet's more than just a search company. They branched out into the cloud and YouTube and autonomous driving. The name change was a way to draw attention to the rest of the businesses. With Facebook, now Meta, I think Zuckerberg came to the same conclusion. The conclusion that the Facebook part of the business simply is too small versus Instagram, WhatsApp. And it also didn't include all this metaverse stuff that tons of tech CEOs keep telling me will revolutionize travel and gaming and entertainment. And, of course, Facebook's got $10 billion it can throw at it. Probably has to spend much more to make it work. It is something like science fiction. The idea is that when you step into the metaverse, you can be anyone you want, anywhere you want. Hence why I said this morning on Squawk on the Street in a hint about the video that I wanted to be the original GOAT. That's right, Muhammad Ali, greatest of all time. You can experience everything in 3D. You can learn things like you're sitting in an actual classroom. You can be teleported to Mars or back to the Coliseum for some bread and circus. I think of Meta's vision as, as the one that finally gives virtual reality mass appeal. In many ways, this metaverse could be the great equalizer for small and medium-sized business, allowing them to have their own 3D digital storefronts, billions in additional commerce to the most challenged of establishments. Same goes for education, where you can have the experience of learning in a classroom while you're still at home. And don't even get me started on gaming. I'm glad I don't play games because otherwise I bet this would consume my entire life. I would never be able to leave unless it was Grand Theft Auto, which I think is too violent. And as I said Endlessly, ever since I first learned that there could be such a thing as a metaverse, sometimes NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Wong, sketched it, he sketched it out for me years ago. And uh, I was kind of blown away when he did. I mean, he, he was talking about being able to create all these characters around me. I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, can I really surround myself with Beethoven, Mozart, and Brahms? Attend Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, then appear in West Side Story as Tony, make a more positive ending? He said, no problem. There are many reasons why I call Jensen Wong Leonardo da Vinci. Not the least of which is he showed me how real life isn't more real than imagined life. In fact, if done right, you can't tell the difference. If done really right, then you'll think that these metaverse characters are more real than real itself. Or if we want to put it in more ominous terms that I don't think is deserving, but I know people are already thinking about, they're trying to build the matrix. I don't think that concept be contained by the much derided name Facebook. The billions of people use it constantly, but it is endlessly criticized, often by those same people. 
Just as it took Alphabet for me to think of Google as more than a play on search, it may take Meta to remind you that Facebook isn't just something you wish would go away, except when you want to be on Instagram. Sometimes it feels, doesn't it, that the half the world has a codependent relationship with social media? That's how you know it's a good business model. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, now, can the rebrand help to justify the stock's valuation? Because we are, again, on bad money. Every now and then, I do feel like the price journeys, multiples, and price to sales ratios, and enterprise values, and out year projections are all shackles of not just the job, but my brain. The theoretical four walls of the spreadsheet canvas that I feel trapped in nightly. I know when we use bulletins for the investment club, talking about why the charitable trust isn't selling Facebook, the stock, by the way, you've owned it since 64, it's at 317. We can't just say, we have seen uh, the metaverse and it is us. We explain the context of the quarter and play an old common sense English, not Wall Street gibberish, which is why we held on through this period. Thank heavens. Uh, I did all the jokes. I looked at all the jokesters on Twitter about this, and they all talked about how now I got to change the name Fang to Mang. Uh, although, if we were to bolderize the darn thing, let, let's replace the G2, right? I mean, come on, let's get serious. Let's add a second M. Let's, let, let's put in Microsoft, darn it. I say, you know what? Bye bye, Fang. Hello, Mama. Mama, please. What really matters here, as I always say about mama, is that the secret of their valuation is that they're all in the habit of reinvention. That's why I love them so much. Facebook can't be Facebook after you spend time in the metaverse, because to paraphrase Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard, we are big, but the screen got too small. Speaking of mama, let's talk about the twin elephants in the room, Apple and Amazon, both of which are selling off in after hours trading in the wake of some, what well, I guess, look, I, I don't mind saying not so hot numbers. With Apple, I mean, even though we're going to put some asterisks there, so don't get upset, because you know I like these. With Apple, the problems are obviously temporary. They took a $6 billion hit, but they would have made, so to speak, because of supply chain woes. And they can't get enough, their hands on enough semiconductors, just like everybody else, which is why their phone and accessories business came in weaker than expected. They can't make enough of this stuff to meet the demand. CEO Tim Cook said it could get worse in the fourth quarter before it gets better, which is not what we wanted to hear. That said, he also told us that in terms of semiconductors, we're seeing some major improvement as foundries in Southeast Asia come back online after getting hit by COVID. Still, Tim did tell me that while he still expects record quarters, that shortage could get worse. So why would I still like Apple? I mean, let's see. The revenues didn't beat. and uh, He's talking about the next quarter maybe not being as great as I wanted. Well, the good news is Apple's amazing brand, okay? Its brand is business deferred, not business lost. Hence why the stock's not being obliterated in after hours. And it's just rolling back a little more than today's gains. People understand. People are somewhat forgiving. Now, you know my position on Apple. Own it, don't trade it. That hasn't changed. And supply shortages will be cured. We just don't know when. Analysts are impatient beasts. And I expect to see downgrades tomorrow morning. I am sure some will go buy to hold, hoping to get back in again lower price. We don't play that game for the child trust. I don't think you should either. Remember, it's a supply problem, not a demand issue that matters. If it was demand, the conversation would be quite different. Or the soliloquy? How about Amazon? All right, they're getting hit by shortages and rising transportation costs, too. But on top of that, the retail business is decelerating, in part because it's up against some very difficult comparisons. Management's guidance wasn't great either. However, the Amazon Web Services business is on fire. In the end, I think the problems here are temporary, too, just like with Apple. I would tell you that if this stock were up 50% for the year, I'd just take a sell it, probably. I'd be more, more concerned. Maybe you can get it lower. But as I'm telling investment club members, well, it's only up 5%. So, I mean, the market pretty much anticipated not so stellar quarter, and that's what you got. The bottom line, I learned a long time ago something that I think I have to share with you. It was don't bet against mama. Nothing tonight has changed my mind. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or Give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.